Hey, welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here. I am joined by my new friend, my new best friend, Jonathan Isaac. And, and uh, man, he, we are so excited for this podcast today. It's going to be incredible. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, Sean. I, and, I really appreciate getting to meet you and just, I, I've heard a lot about you. I've yeah. read a lot about you and looked you up on Instagram and everything. And, and I've got nothing but great things to say. Thank you. Thank you, man. And and not a bad backdrop, huh? No, this is perfect. This, 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 this is how you should. You should <laughs> this is how all podcasts should be done. We're here in on the east coast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and so, um, man, it's so good to be with you. I'm so excited to talk about your book and to talk about your journey. Yes, and sir. I'm a massive basketball fan. Okay. I have been my whole life. Okay. I probably got thirty different pairs of, you know, Jordan ones. Oh, wow. I got quite a collection of. Uh, old school 90s NBA jerseys. I'm like a 90s guy, you know. Okay. But, um, man, I want you to just share with us a little bit of your story, you know. Um, how'd you get to where you are, your yeah. journey? Yeah, let's just start so, there. So, I, okay, so I, I would say the start of it, the, part of the reason why we're here is because a year and a half ago, I was the only player that decided to stand in the NBA bubble. Right. right. For the national anthem. And then a couple of months later, there was the whole vaccine stuff that, you know, I was one of the only players that decided to go unvaccinated throughout right. the season. Um, and God protected me. God kept me. I'm okay. Everything is good. Um, but, you know, part of me doing the book is to step, tell the story of my life. And right. so when I stood in the bubble, what I said to everybody was, look, I believe that the love of Jesus is the thing that is going to change the world because it has changed me. Right. The way that God loves in a different way than the world loves and taking a viral moment like George Floyd's death, I think was that opportunity to profess the love of God to everybody. Right. And so, but in writing the book, it tells the story of where I came from, my journey, struggling with fear, struggling with right. anxiety, struggling with self, self insecurities to becoming the person who was willing to stand up for what they believe right. in because I wasn't. And it is a God story. It's about um, God's God, God guiding you and leading you yeah. and ultimately finding your identity and boldness and confidence in Christ. And it's all about the people along the way who helped me to get there. My mentor, my pastor, Dr. Deron Hepburn, my wife that I, that, I, that I found and been married for six months now. All about just the story of who Jonathan Isaac is. Wow. And so you, I mean, we, we, we witnessed those moments, of course, when you took a stand. Um, when everyone else was kneeling, when you, you know, decided, Hey, listen, I'm not going to inject myself with this experimental vaccine just because everyone else is. Yeah. And I think that, you know, a lot of America was, was there, right? Like, I think if you look at the polling or you look at the majority of what Americans thought, um, you were probably more in line with that. But I think in people's minds, they think the NBA, they think everyone's, you know, drunk the Kool-Aid, everyone's crazy. And then all of a sudden we see you stand up. And I think what my, a lot of my question is, what is that inner core in you? Like, what is it that caused you yeah. to want to, to want to take a stand, you know, to not want to back down from the mob and how has that journey brought you? Of course you, you wrote a book on it, but yeah. what has that produced in your life since that moment? Well, one has produced a book. <laughs> it's, it's produced me being able to talk about it in a book, but I would say what's on the inside is, is I, I, to the best of my ability and by the grace of God, want to humbly walk out my Christianity. And yeah. throughout the book and throughout my life, God has given me moments of standing in small, small ways. Yeah. So I, I didn't just go from somebody who, who wouldn't stand for a second and into this person who would stand um, for what he believes in and be confident in it and bold in it. Not not overnight. Yeah. God, throughout throughout my journey in my life, God has given me small moments of of having to preach at church and, and small moments yeah. of having to speak to right. a teammate about God and, and 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 my relationship with Christ. And those moments have grown me inside, like a like a it's grown my faith and my 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 commitment and my boldness to Christ. Where I'm saying I'm willing to take to step out when other people not may not be willing to step out, right. and to be able to give them a voice and, and and somebody to look to to say if he's doing it, I can do it too. Right. Did you have a lot of people when you took those stands, either one, when you didn't take a knee or two, when you didn't get the vax, did you have a lot of people privately saying, man, we're with you and not publicly being with you? Like, how was that? Because I've experienced that. For sure. And, and But I, I understand it. I, I understand like the, the societal pressure. The, right, right. Like, totally. And, and even, you know, people on the other side of trying to make it a moral Right, right. Like you're a bad person if you right. don't take this vaccine. <laughs> right, so right. A lot of people, you know, are afraid, and they say, "Well, I don't want to be the one that's in that's uh, right. on the firing squad." 
And so I have had many conversations where somebody shoots me a text and says, oh, I, su- I, I support you. You know, what you're doing is so courageous. But behind the scenes, you're like, I don't, <laughs> like yeah. you know, in the public eyes, like, I don't, I don't want to touch that. And so I, I get it. And I just I just hope that in time they will have the courage to stand up for their convictions. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Um, I mean, after you've taken those stands and even you feel like more have come after you? What? Well, what I've tried my best to do is not look at the negativity. Right. There has been absolutely negativity. Right. After I, I, I haven't even told you this, the, the game after I stood in the bubble, the game after that, I tore my ACL. And so there was a, there was a flood wow. of negativity and people saying, oh, it's wow. a, a knee for a knee and God. Right, right, and right, right. Things. And so there, there's been a ton of negativity, but there's been even more encouragement. Right. There's yeah. been even more letters of, of Christians saying, wow, right. I want to be bold. Yeah. I want to stand up for what I believe in and I want to do it in love. Like, so it's not just they just want to stand, but they want to model yeah. it in the way that I was able to model it and model it in the model it in the way that I was able to talk about the vaccine at the press conference and, and, right. and, and just and just come from a, from a humble place. And so I, I, I try my best to look at the encouragement and there has been absolutely more encouragement than negativity. Well, man, you 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 kept my hope alive in the NBA. I was like <laughs> when I was watching I all that, I was like, oh. Please, God, if there's just one, if there's just one, you know, and I saw you and I was so incredibly encouraged. And I think, you know, I can speak for for so many other people that would say the same thing. Thank you, so you think about the, uh, you know, that whole verse about like we're we're in the world. We're not of the world, you know, like we're we're somehow we have this call. And that's kind of like where hold the line, like our whole yeah. thing came from. We had this call to be people that are involved in these areas of society. Yes. Like the Great Commission is, it, you know, we all just don't get on a plane and go to China, you know. And that's what I wanted to actually give my life to. So it's funny that, wow. that, that my journey has been so different. But arts, entertainment, uh, uh, music, sports, sports yeah. politics, like we're called to it, be in yes. those in industries as an influence. And... So in, we're embedded in, and I think a lot of people, even Christians, they would say, well, forget the NBA, it's so woke, forget the NFL, right, I'm never right, watching right. it, but whatever. And I'm kind of like, or politics, you know, yeah. politics is crazy. And I'm like, no, no, we need more Christians represented. Wow. We're wow. called to be salt and light. <laughs> That's, that's why when you told me that you had ran at one point in time, I'm like, you're somebody that's needed. <laughs> so don't be hesitant to run again, just saying. <laughs> but like, to, to me, it's the understanding piece. So yeah. again, Christians and, 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 and being fearful and, and it's easy to retract and just say, I'm just going to go to church on Sunday and, and love everybody at the church yeah. and stay in the church four walls. But to your point, you know, we, we are called to be uh, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove right. in the marketplace, to be wise yeah. enough to influence people, to be wise enough to change people's hearts, to be wise enough to love them like God in order to, uh, to for, for them to be saved. And so um, I completely agree that there needs to be more people willing to stand up in their sphere of influence. Right. Um, but it does take understanding. And yeah. so when we were talking about right versus left or the, the conservative label, or the liberal label, the Christian label has to trump all right. of that Come at on. the end of the day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, be your calling card of you know, how you choose to influence the world. Yeah. I mean, I always tell people and I just tweeted this out recently, like I'm a Christian, then I'm a conservative, then I'm would lean more Republican, you know, like, but it's that order, you know, it's, it's Christians first, Mm -hmm. then I'm a conservative. Cause I mean, there's a lot of policies and different things that even don't line up with the conservative point of view. You know, that's just what I believe. Um, so have you seen, have you started to see a community or a network of people in the sports world that is willing to be bold, is willing to take a stand that is willing to well, I, I believe that it's forming, okay. um, but I believe that it does start with somebody being right. be, being the forerunner or right. somebody yeah. willing to do it. And so a couple of days, I would say about a week after I decided to stand, I got a phone call from a soccer player that played for Orlando MLS that was like, look, I want to do the same thing. Wow. I believe Come in what for and I was able to Come walk on. him through it for him, you know, walking yeah. through like, you don't have to be afraid. Yeah. You cannot stand for yeah. God and God not stand for you. All the things that right. my pastor told me before, right. before <laughs> yeah. I stood. And so... um. And so, yeah, I, I was able to walk him through that and, and, and exactly what you're talking about. So with, with with being able to step out, I've had plenty of conversations and I do believe that that reservoir of, of, of athletes who are silent or, you know, Christian in their convictions are going to be willing to step out and, and, and be more bold as time goes on. Because it's, ne- it's a necessity. It's, it's something that's going to have to, it's going to have to happen oh, yeah. as the world continues to get done. And I think, and I think that 
people are beginning to see the fruit, yes. you know, of, I mean, we were talking about it earlier, of the things that they're standing for, realizing that there's a lot of, there was a lot of hype. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of confusion. And even as we were discussing, like so much of it is spiritual, you know, like so much of, of what, what happened in 2020 and, and what took place in that season was, was, was a, you know, our battles not against flesh and blood. Right. It's against powers right. and principalities. And it was like the, the enemy was trying to do everything he could to throw the world yeah. into the most crazy chaos I think, especially with COVID, it was, it was, and you, I mean, you said this well, like, it was such a spirit of fear. Right. Like, everyone was under where it was like, I don't want to leave my house uh, or people wearing a mask right. while they're driving or somebody wearing a right. mask while they're walking down the street. It was, it was that level of spirit of fear where people were just so intoxicated with fear that they, they, they right. didn't have any faith. Yeah. And, 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 and in that season, how did you reconcile with uh, people that, would say, well, you don't, you don't care about black lives. You don't care about, oh, you don't care about, you don't care about, you know, like, how did you reconcile that as you were walking through that? For, for me, it, it was really just looking at my life. So it was saying that, do I believe that black lives matter? Yes. Do I believe that kneeling for the national anthem and wearing a black lives matter t-shirt are the only way to support black lives? No. And so it, what, what it was for so much was the, the, you know, people and, and society and, you know, the NBA or whatever, trying to make it seem like that was the only choice you had right. to support black lives. Right. And if you didn't, you were against the movement. Yeah. And if you did, whether you liked black people or like not, buy in. You, know, you were, I mean, and yeah. even if you didn't, even if you were, say somebody was secretly racist, they could wear the t-shirt and they were like, you're, you're, you're in, you support the group. And so just looking at my life and saying, yo, my life has been supported by the gospel. And I've been able to support and help change other people's lives that look like me through the gospel. And so I just rejected the notion that that was the only way to support black lives. And because they made it, they, they made it that, that that was the only way. That's when I'm like, this, this isn't for me. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was like this. It was such a mob thing. Yes. You know, that All came the companies on. and everybody like having to show their allegiance. To right. Was well, and, and, it, and, it, and it felt so I think it feels so cheap because it's like. It, it like that's what that's what cancel culture does is it demands that you conform. It's not it's not about the inward. It's not about the heart. The it's about it's about the outward appearance. Right. You know, you you got to post a black square. Like as a musician, if you don't post a black square, you're out, man. You don't care. Right. I mean, I remember I had people that like people I had known for years. They were so upset because I wouldn't post a black square, and I'm mm. like, you need me to do that to prove to you that I'm not racist or to prove to you that I don't care. Like this is crazy town. Like that's the kind of, that's the level that we had reached in that year, you know? And, um, thankfully I feel like that things have been exposed and there's a lot of stuff going on, but, but I, I really, you know, uh, Billy Graham had a statement where he said, courage is contagious. Yes. Uh, when a brave man takes a stand, the spines of everyone else are stiffened. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Is. That's a great quote. And, and I do feel like we're in that season. You know, I'm I'm fin releasing a book on boldness. You're releasing one called Why I Stand. I'm releasing one on boldness. Yes. I feel like these messages, like we got to we gotta encourage the body of Christ, you know, to and take a stand. What, what I was saying about the, the times in which standing, um, as the world continues to get darker, are becoming more and more necessary. Like it's, right. it's going to get to a point where a line is drawn in the sand, where it's like they're either with us or against us, and you're going to have to make a decision right. on in that moment to say what you're for, who it is that you believe, and you're going to have to declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior right. as the world continues to get darker. And so this is the time to encourage the body. This is the time for Christians to get more bold, but also to 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 j just see the heart of God. I believe that God loves everybody and God is trying to win everybody. Yes, we stand for truth. Yes, we stand for our convictions, but we have to learn that we were loved by God right. in order to be saved. So we have to do some loving and love is an action word. Right. It's not just God yeah. so loved the world that he right. gave, he right. gave of himself yeah. because he loved us. And so we have to be willing to go into these communities. We have to be right. willing to be the ones to, 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 to lend a hand to our brother, like, like the Good right. Samaritan story, the one who's willing to cross the street and help um, is the one he truly loves and not the, the priest or the Levite who just continued to walk on. Yeah. And so um, that, that, that's where I'm at. Do you feel like that the cancel culture has overplayed its hand? I think, think it's coming to a close. I, I, think, to a degree, I, th I think, I think, I mean, part of it, that's, that's just what the enemy, enemy does. Like when the enemy does show his hand, you, you get to see what, he, what he's, what he's right. going after, what he's about. And so um, for sure, I, I think that people are going to be waking up more and more and more. 
I just want people to see the message of Christ, the heart yeah. of Christ, and um, to really understand it and not just see it as a moment to go back at the other side, but ultimately to see what's going right. on and, and, and go higher. How do you feel like, how do you, how, how, what is your encouragement to people to, that have a problem with, they don't know how to see love. Like I tell people, one of the reasons I'm so, I fight for the purity of the church in this season mm-hmm. to not bow to culture it's because you fight for the things you love, wow. right? Wow. So I'm, I'm preaching at a church here tomorrow wow. morning and that's a big part of my message is like, it was love that drove Jesus into the temple yes. with the whip. Yes. Like that was love. That's, that looked like love. Yes. I mean, t- some people would interpret that as violence, wow. but that was actually the love of the father. How do you, how do you help redefine what love looks like through boldness in an era where love is love is love is love is love. Nobody even knows what it means. You know, let's just accept everybody, receive everybody. But really the way of the cross is, is narrow. Yeah, it is. And and I think that's the, well, that, that is the message that not a lot of people want to hear. Right. Is that it's, 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 it's narrow. It's few. It's not broad. Right. Um, and, and God chastens those that he loves. So I, I think that the biggest thing is Christian understanding and being able to understand God's love. It's, it's, it, God's love isn't love love every everybody and everything. That's not the love of God. Right. Um, God's love is, is he loves us to gain us. He right. loves us to call us. He loves us to help us to change. And so I think it's just you speaking on it, me speaking on it, to, to get people to interpret the love of God the right way and see that chastening is love. Right. And most people wouldn't want to chase anybody because they feel like it's not loving. And right. so, um, so yeah, I, I just think that it, it, it is the understanding that has to grow. It is understanding the heart of God that has to grow and people that are willing to speak out and, 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 and confront the love that people are spewing as love everyone and love everything. Right. Wow. You, uh, you know, there's like a cultural gospel or a cultural Christianity. I feel like that, uh, is in places like the NBA or the NFL. Mm -hmm. Like, and I got a lot of friends in those, you know, in professional sports. But then there's moments where you kind of see, okay, is your faith real? Or is it just a cultural thing, you know? Um, How do you feel like that's being redefined in this season? Well, I I think, again, like it's it's all Because you were telling me, like, you know, you grew up in New York. You kind of went to church. It was kind of your thing. It was kind of a cultural thing. But it wasn't until you were in a dark moment where right. you had that experience. Right. I won't give it away it's in the book. <laughs> but until, until I had that experience yeah. with Christ. But I, I think, again, it, it comes down to us being willing to talk about it. And so yeah. as, as long as as long as long Christians are silent to that cultural Christianity that, that, right. that, that is outward and, and, and not inward, as long as we're silent and we don't, we don't confront it, we don't combat it, it will continue to, to, to go on forever. Um, but I, I, think, I think God knows that as well. And so God knew where I was in yeah. terms of the cultural Christianity. Yeah, I'm a Christian because I pray a little bit. Yeah, I'm right. a Christian because I went to church from time to time. And it, again, it wasn't until I was in that dark place where most people get to where they understand, well, I really need God. And so they're able to develop that relationship. And again, it wasn't until that man stopped me on the elevator. So I think as Christians, we're called to infiltrate people's lives in a, in a loving yeah. way to win them. And so that man stopped me on the elevator and said, I can tell you how to be great. And I said, how? He said, you have to know Jesus. And that was the start of, a, of my life completely turning upside down. But if he didn't do that, I wouldn't be here. I'd still be in the same position that I was. Wow. And so God uses people. And so we have to be willing to, 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 to talk to people and to live our lives out vocally and, yeah. and, 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 and on our Instagram pages and all to show people what a real relationship with God is like. Yeah. And, and, and not just damn the people who have this cultural Christianity. Right. And, and, right. and you're, you're, you don't know Christ and you're this right. and you're that and bash them. It's like, yeah. Oh, let me invite you into what a real relationship with Christ looks like. It's not, it's not cheap. It's it's real and it's eternal right. and it's 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 real love and it's real peace and it's real joy. Um, and and let me show you what that looks like. And it's real grace and it's real mercy. Right. Um. And so the people who are living that cultural Christianity, they, in 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 essence, they're missing out on what it really is to walk with God. And so, um, just just the goal is to win them. The goal is to win them. But you have to be vocal to win somebody. Yeah. Wow. What what do you feel like? Um... I guess when it comes to like your injury that season, yeah. what it's been like for you, you mentioned that, you know, the day after you was it the game after you took the a stand, you got injured. After, yes. And, um, how has that process been for you? Not, not playing, but 
yet even the Lord sometimes brings us through yeah, these seasons. Yeah, it's, I, have you it's, felt? It, it, it's been tough. It's yeah. been tough when it first happened, all the questions of, God, why are you allowing this to happen? Why, why, right. why, why, why is this happening to me right now? And, and, you know, all these people coming against me, a knee for a knee, and it has to be a knee injury and all these things. Right. But I, I truly do have the right people in my life, my yeah. pastor, yeah. Uh, my wife now, my family, who are able to encourage me in the moment. And I found purpose in it. I yeah. found that God doesn't do anything by chance. And so there would be no book if there was no injury. I'd, right. I'd be playing and I, the, the moment would have gone, but there wouldn't have been something that people can tangibly hold and say, right. this is the life of Jonathan Isaac. And I see his perspective on right. Black Lives Matter issues and vaccine issues and why he did what he did. It would have just been a fleeting moment. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I, I know that God has a purpose for my life. And yeah. I know that God has used that moment and ultimately to, to be for his glory. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> yeah. what's next? And, you know, just keep on rolling. But to see this here, for it to be tangible, I'm like, it, it was worth it. Yeah. Wow. And, and you know, realizing that, and I think most people maybe don't even come into professional sports like you, understanding the bigger picture, that this is such a tiny part of your life. Come on. Come on. It's like such a blip, you, you know, yeah. and they, they find their identity, they find everything in it. How have you in your mind already planned past, say one day, whenever your career is done, yeah. your multi-million dollar contracts are done, and you that part of your life has been played out, like, where do you see yourself? So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, this is a deep no, question. Know, you're, you're but just pe people, people have thrown around like, oh, you're going to be a pastor. And all <laughs> I can and see I, that. I, I listen, I'm always like. <laughs> because I because I reverence it so much and because I get to see what it is because I'm I'm close to a pastor, I'm get to right. see what it is to really pastor people. I'm like, God, you need to you need to grow me so much to be able to do that and to <laughs> love people in that way and to handle people's problems and all that stuff. Um but at the same time I can see, you know, that call of God on my life. Right. And so um uh, when it happens, I'm not sure, but um, I'm, I'm just continuing to walk you out. Feel I, a call into ministry? Yeah, I I, I do, and, I, and I'm actually an ordained minister at our church. Oh, nice! In Orlando, Florida. Oh, so cool! I, I speak from time to time, but that's to me that's like a a, a preacher. It's not a pastor. And so, uh, <laughs> and so I, I I do, and I just you know I, I want to walk through it like you know again yeah. like humbly and, and 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 do it and get to it the right way. I'm not ready at at, at, at all, right. and so um. So yeah, I think that's a part of what's what's next for me. But right now, it's just like I want I want to be an advocate for people who struggle with anxiety, who right. struggle with fear, who struggle with all these right. different things, to let them know that finding your identity in Christ is the answer. Right, not your Come job on. like I did. I found it. Me, I found my my identity in basketball, and it left me in the same position that I found right. me, um, with a facade of peace, with a facade of right. fame and money, but behind the scenes, you right. know, breaking, deteriorating. And so um, that's in the book as well. But just I, I, I want to I want people to see what a transformational relationship with Jesus Christ is like. And and that's who, that's that's what my life is <laughs> at the end of the day and yours as well. And, and everybody who has truly come to know Christ. And so I, I, I want to be a beacon of hope. I want to be a beacon yeah. of love and light for people um, and just continue to make connections like this and, 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 and take over this world for Jesus. Come the on. Bible says that. Um, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, right. but the violent take it by, by force. force. So I, I want to be a part of winning the culture of transforming people's lives in a way that that, that honors God, but it's yeah. also that's also yeah. real and it's also in the trenches and loving people and, and, and changing lives. And at our church in Orlando, in Orlando, we do a lot of you know ministry and on the street and, and homeless people and, and, and putting them in homes and getting them jobs and all these different wow. things. And it really is the heart of our pastor there. Wow. You know, at, at jumping, I'm just. I'm, I'm excited for the position that I'm in and wow. I just want to keep running with it. When you were just sharing that, man, I had this like, I had this picture. I think it was about 10 years ago. I was on a plane and uh, I was boarding the plane and I'd look behind me and, and I was like, what? And, and it was, it was David Robinson, the Admiral. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And so we got on the plane and it crazy story. Our seats ended up being next to each other. Right. <laughs> That's so dumb. And he's seven, he's seven foot one. Yeah. So he's like, I'm like put putting my seat flat because it was from Europe. We're flying back from Europe okay. and he's got his legs bent. And we sat there probably for six hours and he just preached at me, man. Wow. He preached. He told me his whole testimony. Wow. He told me when he got in the league, he didn't know God. He didn't care. He was just partying, he was doing whatever. And he had a come to Jesus moment. Guy preached to him like wow. you're saying. Come on. <laughs> got saved. His son, like anyway, long story short. All he was talking about was ministry, and I just had a picture of you, and I just feel like you're a new you're a new wave of that generation. Like you're the next generation of basketball playing, preaching, 
machines, you know, that are going to win souls for Jesus. And so I'm just honored to know you, man. And I just, I really had that picture. I had never thought about that for probably 10 years. And in, in, in the moment where you were talking about ministry, I could see that like, maybe even this is a confirmation to you, you know, that God has making a way for you to do that. Cause that, that flight home with him really impacted me. I mean, we still stay in touch, but he got radically saved in the league. I think his first one set first or second year. So Anyway, well, thank you so much. Everybody needs to get this. I it comes it. out when? It comes out on May 17th. It comes out on May 17th. It's the same day you're doing your you know, Supreme Court. Yeah, thing, so. we're going to be at the Supreme Court, but y'all need to get this. And and Jonathan and I, we you, you pre-order it on Amazon. Um, you can get it probably at Barnes & Noble or wherever yep. else, too. Yep. Yes. And, uh, man, we just really are grateful for you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm stoked to read this. My book will come out a month. Two months later. Awesome. Awesome. Kind of same theme yeah, a little sure. bit, you know? I, I, got, I saw your cover and everything. I love it. Yeah. I, I, again, like, this this is the time. And yeah. I think that it's not a coincidence that they're coming out around the same time. Come on. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to make this connection and obviously get yeah. to know you more and, and see more of what you're doing. And I, I even appreciate you willing to, you know, to plug the book and talk about it. It, it means a lot. Oh, man. I'm, I'm so honored. I'm so honored. Any last words to people in encouragement? Yeah, just, just just be encouraged. Right right now is the time to stand up, to, to, to continue to fight back against right. what the enemy is doing and, and just do it in love. Do it with the, the consciousness that God wants us to love. And Jesus came to love and he loved the woman at the well and he loved right. the people that were different than us and on the other side than us. And so um, th- that's my message and I just want to keep running with it. I, I wow. appreciate everyone who gets the book. I thank you so much. Like you said, Amazon is going to come out on the 17th, Barnes & Noble, all these different stories, but I'm just grateful. So thank you so much. Well, bless you, man. Thanks for being on.